Please stand. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be His kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Holy One. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, because without you we are not able to please you, mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts. Through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading this morning is taken from the book of Exodus, chapter 14. The angel of God, who was going before the Israelite army, moved and went behind them, and the pillar of cloud moved from in front of them and took its place behind them. It came between the army of Egypt and the army of Israel. And so the cloud was there with the darkness, and it lit up the night. One did not come near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, the Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night and turned the sea into dry land. And the waters were divided. The Israelites went into the sea on the right ground, the waters forming a wall to them on their right and on their left. The Egyptians uh, pursued and sent into the sea after them all of Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and chariot drivers. At the morning watch, the Lord in the pillar of fire and cloud looked down upon the Egyptian army and threw the Egyptian army into panic. He clogged their chariot wheels so that they turned with difficulty. The Egyptians said, let us flee from the Israelites for the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord and said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea so that the water may come back onto the Egyptians upon their chariots and chariot drivers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the Egyptians, the sea returned to its normal depth. As the Egyptians fled before it, the Lord tossed the Egyptians into the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the chariot drivers. The entire army of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea, not one of them remained, but the Israelites walked on dry ground through the sea. The waters 
building, forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great work that the Lord had did against the Egyptians. So the people feared the Lord and believed in the Lord and in his servant Moses. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm is uh, 114. And if you would uh, like to respond after the asterisk. Hallelujah. When Israel came out of Egypt, Judah became God's sanctuary. And Israel the sea beheld it and fled. The, Lord turned the, back. the mountains skipped like rams. What ailed you, O sea, that you fled? O Jordan, that you turned back. You mountains that you skipped like rams. You little fields like young sheep. Tremble, O earth, at the presence of the Lord. At the presence of the God of Jacob. Who turned the hard rock into a pool of water. And has blessed them into a flowing spring.
And then he went and threw him into prison until he could pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to the Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned them and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleased with me. Should you not have mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will do so to every one of you if you do not forgive your brothers or sisters in your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. Now I thought with the spacing here, it might be all right for me to have my mask off for the sermon. Is that okay? Anybody? All right. Thank you. Um, did any of these readings today hit home for you? Any of them feel a little uncomfortable for you? I think they probably should have. And in the midst of everything that's going on right now, it's proof that the Bible still speaks to us 2,000 years later. Clearly. Power. Paul writes to us, Welcome those who are weak in the faith. In other words, welcome those who aren't as far along as you are. Welcome those who are not as enlightened as you are. Welcome those who do not share the same beliefs that you do. But, but he says, not for the purposes of quarreling over opinions. In other words, our job is not to convince others how right we are, but rather to be in relationship with them. To welcome them into the church, into our lives, into relationship, because that is what God would have us do. Not to set them right, not to convince them that they're wrong, but rather to create relationship. And he goes on to talk about some important topics of the day. Some believe in eating other things, anything, while others only eat vegetables. Now that may sound like a silly statement, but at that time, in Judaism slash Christianity, this was a hot, hot topic. What is it lawful to eat? And you know about the dietary, dietary restrictions of the Old Testament. And by the time of, of Jesus, those had been amplified and magnified uh, to an to a art, a science of what could be eaten, how it could be prepared, and so forth and so on. And so you have these new Christians that are being welcomed into the faith. And they come from backgrounds that eat very differently. And they're looking at these Jews and saying, why can't I mix cheese and meat? Why can't I have pig? They're, they're everywhere. Haven't you seen pigs make them? They're really easy to raise. Why, why wouldn't we eat these? There were a lot of questions. And what it boiled down to is them saying, look, if you're really going to honor God, then this is how you have to do it. And other people say, I do honor God. I love God. I praise God. And Paul is saying to them, look, don't get stuck in the middle of these silly fights. He says, don't be a part of it. But his reasoning is something that may have been new to them and, and may uh, help you to reflect differently on some of your disagreements. He says, because ultimately, the only opinion that matters is God's. That may not be an easy pill for some of us to swallow. Paul is saying to you and I, nobody really cares about your opinion. Except you. <laughs> now, you may not like to hear that. I find that as good news. Right? That's a relief. I don't have to convince anybody that I'm right or wrong. All I have to do is strive my very best to be right with God. <laughs> Period. If other people love that, fantastic. If they don't, that's all right too. All they say to us that it is God whom we will stand before. It is God alone who will judge us in the end. And that is all that we need to concern ourselves with. Now you may say, well, that one talk about what you might eat, that might have been a big deal for them. It's not all that big of a deal, though. So he goes on to talk about the Sabbath. He says, some of you will say that one day is better than the other, while others will say that all days are the same. 
Now there was a debate raging in the early church that Saturday is still the Sabbath, right? It always has been. That's what God said. And others say, no, nope, now it's Sunday. Or now it's another day of the week that fits better with our schedule. And people were incensed. They were up in arms. I mean, when you read the little bit of stuff that we have from that earliest, earliest church, people were in major fights. Churches split over this stuff, just like we do today. Paul says, God, don't let that come between you and your fellow Christians. This is not what it's about. And I would add to that, he's further saying, between those who are not Christians. Don't get in these arguments. Stand your ground, yes. Have your beliefs. Stick with them, yes. That doesn't mean you have to get in a fight with everyone around you. So I suspect that the parallel to this for us today is pretty obvious. If you take any of, any of the hot button issues that we talk about, immigration, race, all these different issues, and God says to us, yes, I want you to be on the right side of this. I want you to love and care for others, but don't pretend that you can understand what that means for everyone. Don't assume that because someone disagrees with where you stand on these issues that they are unloving or unkind. Perhaps they have a very different understanding than you do that is rooted in love, that is rooted in their desire to see others thrive and grow. Whatever gets to that level, whether whatever the separation is, whether we say Republican, Democrat, conservative, liberal, whatever, race, whatever division it is that you want to bring up or feel. God says it is not as important as the call to be in relationship with one another. And God says, in the end, I will make this right. I will make it right. You don't need to worry about it. That is my job. You say, but, 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 but. They're doing this. They're doing that. That can't be right. God says, don't worry about it. I will take care of them. I will judge them just as I will judge you. Now, if you're feeling good about this at this point, you shouldn't. <laughs> you will not be judged favorably. What? Based on the merits of your life and action, you will not make the grade. Period. You might be sitting there saying, but God, I'm way better than Michael Gray. <laughs> yeah, that's not a high bar. <laughs> you might be saying, oh, I'm better than Wes. Again, that is a terribly low bar. God says, I will judge you based on the perfection of God. And by that we will all come up short. Now, that may sound troubling, and it is. But the good news is that God will make up the difference. That God will make it right. As, Peter, or as Paul says, uh, that God will allow those to stand before God. God will make them stand. In other words, it's God's mercy, God's love, God's grace that crosses the divide between us and righteousness. And so like the slave in our gospel story, God is saying to me, look at all that I'm willing to forgive you. Don't you think you ought to forgive your fellow servant? Don't you think you ought to forgive your fellow human beings? And if your answer is no, then you haven't grasped what God has done for you. You have not accepted the gift that God is offering to you. If you're looking around right now and saying, no, I'm willing to let all the Democrats or all the Republicans in heaven, but not the other. I'll forgive them. But the other, unforgive them. You've missed it. You've missed the point altogether. God says, before me alone will you stand. 
and I will judge everyone equally. You're all going to fail, and if you're willing, I'm going to make up the difference for each and every one of you, and you should give thanks for that. And you might be saying, how, how could God do that? How is that possible? Well, this is the same God that sent the Israelites through the Red Sea on dry ground. This is the same God that delivered them from the most powerful nation in the world. And they never had to lift a finger except to put a little blood on the door, right? That was the only thing they had to do. The God that we worship is a powerful God. It's a God that is capable of all things. A God that can make you right, that can make me right before God. And a God that can even things out. So if you're struggling right now, be okay with the world around you to uh, still love and forgive and accept. But you need to work on it. You need to work on it. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. If you come to my office and say, Wes, I'm trying to forgive everyone, but, like, stop right there. Stop right there. There's nothing in Scripture that comes after that but that you just gave me. We have to love. Here. We have to forgive. Even when we disagree. Even when it's not easy. Even when those people appear to stand for everything that we despise. We're called to love. That was the radical nature of Jesus' message. Right? It wasn't that He said, be, not, be kind to those who are kind to you. Love those who love God. He said, love your enemy. Love those who persecute you. Not only love them in theory, but care for them. He says, give them water. Give them food. Go the extra mile for those whom you see as your enemy. And only then can we be released from the hatred that infects our hearts and our lives. From the evil that pulls us away from God and one another. This is the key that unlocks that door. We talk about peace and joy and all these things. Loving others. Forgiving others. Letting go of those hurts and those wrongs and those ideals that others aren't needing. That is the key that unlocks that door. We're all called to forgive. Even when it's not easy. Because God loves us enough to know. It. That's the key to our to the life that God intended for us. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we give you thanks for this day, for the opportunity to be together, for the safety. We pray that you would bless us with the gift of forgiveness, with the gift of love, with the ability to look past our disagreements with others, to set aside our judgments, and to learn to love fully and completely. All this we ask in your Son's holy name. Amen. Please stand and turn to page 358. Say together the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, Eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not 
Almighty God, to whom our needs are known before we ask, help us to ask only what accords with your will, and those good things which we dare not or in our blindness cannot ask. Grant us for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please turn to page 360. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And always with you. Remember to just wait. Peace. Another reminder as you leave, if you will, put your prayer books on the bench there below the, below the stack. You just set them on the front bench there, and that way we'll be able to cycle out which ones we've already used. So the next group won't be the same. Are there any questions about anything before we continue on? There is the operatory basket there on the table. Uh, normally we have the operatory right now, but if anyone wants to, to do that, you're certainly welcome. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself as an offering and sacrifice to God. 
service will continue on page 361.
Bottom of page 365. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.